the 4th of October, 2012. We are Group 19, Module 2. Cassini's article, Predator Transitory Spillover Induces Trophic Cascades in Ecological Sinks, details shifts in cod and herring populations over the course of three and a half decades. However, a primary focus has been applied to events from 1977 to 1988 in this presentation. This 11-year scope details a shift in cod and herring populations in the Baltic Main Basin and its neighbor, the Gulf of Riga. In the Baltic Main Basin and the Gulf of Riga, cod, herring, zooplankton, and phytoplankton are all present. Cod, based on fluctuations in population size, either depart from or return to the Gulf of Riga from the Baltic Main Basin. This movement of cod affects the remaining trophic levels in the environment because cod consume herring, herring consume zooplankton, and zooplankton consume phytoplankton. Ultimately, the cod population effects trickle down all the way to the base trophic level, the phytoplankton. Tro topics addressed include trophic levels, source sink dynamics, and trophic cascades. A trophic level is a feeding level in an ecosystem. The predator-prey relationships are as follows. Cod eat herring, herring eat zooplankton, and zooplankton eat phytoplankton. The prey is a part of the predator's environment. The predator dies if it cannot get food, so it evolves as the prey evolves. This creates an indirect mutualism between cod and zooplankton, as well as herring and phytoplankton. As the number of cod rise, the number of herring, their prey in the subsequent trophic level, drop. As a result, the number of zooplankton balloon and their prey, the phytoplankton, drop. The average herring size swells after the number of cod increases as a result of less fish competing for more resources. A metaphor for source sink dynamics is the flow of water back and forth from a watering can to a cup. The water, which is a metaphor for your species, will spill over from your source into your sink. As resources decrease in the sink, your water will flow back from your sink into your source to regenerate. So now that we know about trophic levels, trophic cascades, and sourcing dynamics, let's get a picture of what's really happening. These are maps of the cod distribution in the Baltic region. The red coloration will help you trace the cod population. In the 1970s, the cod population builds up in the main basin because hydrological conditions favor reproduction of cod and there's low exploitation of cod by humans. Now we have a big population that needs food. So the population spreads to the north, then spills over into the gulf. The gulf of Riga has low levels of salinity due to which the cods can, cannot reproduce there. That's why we call the gulf a sink, where the population is maintained through migrations from the main basin, or source. Conditions do not favor the cod source forever. In the mid-1980s, the Baltic Sea witnesses adverse conditions and cod population starts collapsing everywhere except for the southern region. That means that our gulf population can no longer be supported by migrants from the main basin. Here is data from a fishery that was set up in the Gulf of Riga. The black line effectively traces the cod population in the gulf and the yellow one plus the herring. Under the red bracket, we see that as the cod increase in the gulf, herring decrease. Under the black bracket, we see that a falling cod population makes herring more abundant in the gulf. Now our focus will shift to the herring, but before we get to that, let's talk about another idea we're going to use, density dependence. To understand the definition of density dependence, we have a population schematic over here. There's a population, and this population can increase through inflow in the form of births and immigration and decrease with outflow of individuals through death or emigration. Suppose that you try to increase this population's size, but the habitat cannot sustain the growth. So we end up with the reduction in births and immigration and an increase in the outflow in the form of more deaths and emigration. So effectively, we get back to the carrying capacity. The population cannot, be, cannot increase beyond that. So that is what we call density dependence. Now, connecting density dependence with the herring population. 
After the cod invade the Gulf of Raga, the herring population decreases. This means that fewer herring have access to food resources so that their body size increases. To sum up, our tar predator, the cod, reaches an overabundance in the Baltic main basin, which is a source. As the cod population increases and needs more food resources, it spills over into the Gulf of Raga. However, the cod population cannot reproduce in the Gulf of Raga, so the Gulf acts as a sink. Some cod even end up migrating back to the source and reproducing, thereby stabilizing the source and the source sink dynamic. These two regions, both the Baltic main basin and the Gulf of Raga, experience several changes in the trophic levels of populations of cod, herring, zooplankton, and phytoplankton. As the cod migrates to the Gulf of Raga, a sequence of changes, trophic cascades, occur in the Gulf. Therefore, top-down regulation occurs as the cod that are in the Gulf of Raga predate on herring, decreasing the number of herring and indirectly benefiting the zooplankton. With the increase in zooplankton, the phytoplankton will decrease. Everything follows the lead horse is our take-home phrase. The variations in the top predator population can lead to a succession of consequences to its main geographic area, as well as other adjacent ge geographic areas that are not normally linked. So the top predator, through spillover, connects nearly isolated food webs. We're excited. The end of our presentation.